we're going to be sketching hyperbolas, and hyperbolas are of the form f of x equals 1 over x. That's like the simplest, most basic hyperbola you can find. And we're also going to look at these ones, f of x equals a over x minus h plus k, where a, h, and k are transformations of this simpler form, f of x equals 1 on x. So this is one of the coolest functions getting around, and I want you to bear with me here so you can see why. It's so cool. Um, if you, let's just put in some of these values. You can see I've made a big table here. Uh, let's put in the number 1. That's easy, right? So if I let x equal 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1. Okay, that's easy. Now, what about 1 divided by 10? Well, that's 1 tenth, or uh, 0 0.1. Now, what about 1 divided by 1,000? That's 0 0.001. And I'm just going to do one more here. 1 divided by 1 million would be 0 0.000001. You can see that no matter how large the x values are, our y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But our y values will always be some number. Our y values are never going to get so small that they're exactly 0. That's cool. Okay, let's look the other way. 0 0.1. 1 divided by 0 0.1. You can type that into your calculator, but it gives you the number 10. 1 divided by 0 0.01 gives you the number 100. Now, if I insert one more in there, if we did 1 divided by 0, 0 0.00000001, we're going to get a huge number, a 1 with like that many zeros after it. It's going to be huge, right? So as we get closer and closer and closer and closer to 0, we're getting a really huge number. What happens if we do 0? 1 divided by 0. If you type 1 divided by 0 into your calculator, you're going to get math error or undefined depending on your calculator. It just doesn't work. That doesn't work. The special word we get here is undefined. Now, all of this just gets flipped over on this side, except everything's going to be negative. So that's going to be negative 100, that's going to be negative 10, and so on. And when we sketch this, we get something just fantastic. Now, there's one special point here, 1, 1. I'm just going to put that in there. And then a mirror image on this side, a special point, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. All right, so I've got these two points. I know my equation is going to pass through those. Now, when x is 10, so when x is 10, which is way out here, the value will be like 0.1. When x is 1,000, which is way off the screen, the value of y is going to be like very close to the x-axis, but not quite touching. When x is a million, which is way, way, way off the screen, probably in a different country, um, it's going to be very, 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 very close to the x-axis, but still not touching. This special behavior is called an asymptote. This equation is getting closer and closer and closer to this blue line and never, ever touching it. Asymptote. All right, we have an asymptote here on the other side, right? Because when x is negative 10, way out here, we're at negative 0 0.1. And so we get this nice little curve like that, getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis and never quite touching it. So in fact, our asymptote passes all the way through here like this. Okay, what about the other stuff? Well, we know that when we're at x equals 0 0.1, which is right here, we're at the number 10. So we should have a nice little curve. Looks like that. Now, that should be a nice curve here, and as we get closer and closer to our y-axis, we're getting closer and closer and closer to it, but we're never quite touching it. When we get to it, we break maths, undefined. We're never allowed to go near, or we can get very close to that y-axis, but we can't touch that y-axis. So we've got another asymptote right there. Now, I feel like this is unbelievable, right? Because, like, obviously in the real world, if you're getting closer and closer and closer to a line, eventually you'll touch it. We're not uh, operating in the real world here. We're operating in the mathematical world where lines are perfect and you can get closer and closer and closer to an infinitely thin line and never quite touch it. It's spectacular. So, this is the function 
y equals 1 on x, or f of x equals 1 on x. It's symmetrical. There's a nice symmetrical line that it, it flips over here, uh, and it gets closer and closer to this asymptote and this asymptote. Now that we've got a sense of what f of x equals 1 on x is, we can easily transform it with the a, h, and k values. So focusing on this, from our previous work, you should know that if you take a function and add something to the function, you're going to shift the function up and down, uh, um, vertical translation. You should also know that if you take a function and add or subtract a h value from it, you're going to shift it left or right, um, sort of the opposite to what you might expect it would move. And finally, if you take a function and multiply it by something, which is what this a is doing, right? We've got 1 on x here. If a was 2, it would be 2 on x. We're multiplying by something. Then you're dilating the function. You're dilating it around the x-axis. So let's take a look. We've got a function, negative 2 on x minus 3 plus 4. There's all sorts of things going on here. It's shifting left and right. It's shifting up and down. It's dilating, and there's a negative, so it's also flipping, reflecting around the x-axis. So, let's do each of those in turn. The first thing we want to think about is these two things here. Shifting left and right, shifting up and down. Now that negative 3, it's going to shift it to the right, because it's a negative 3. Remember, those move in the opposite to what you might expect. So, 3 units to the right. And this positive 4 is going to move it 4 units up. Now, if I ignore the negative 2 for a second, we already knew that a hyperbola looks like this, right? With asymptotes through here and through here. But this one's been shifted 3 units to the right, which means that this asymptote shifts 3 units to the right, and it means that this asymptote 4 units up this asymptote moves four units up. This gives you a very special point here. It gives you the place where the asymptotes intersect. So here we have our Cartesian plane. Asymptotes intersect at point three four, point three four, right there. And then an asymptote downwards and an asymptote across. All right, so we have our asymptotes now. And we would generally think that our equation now looks like down like this and down like this, but there's that negative 2 there. So in fact, it's not going to look like that. It's going to be reflected. So it's going to look roughly like that and that. Now, it should be symmetrical about this uh, diagonal line here. And you can see that I have an x-intercept and I have a y-intercept here. Not always the case with hyperbolas, but it's clear it's going to be the case here. So I can sub x equals something into my equation, and I can sub y equals something into my equation to find these x and y-intercepts. So to find my x-intercept here, I let f of x equal 0. So 0 equals negative 2 on x minus 3 plus 4. And then I just go to work here. So negative 4, negative 2 over x minus 3. Um, what will I do here now? It depends on how you want to work with it. Um, I'll multiply both sides by x minus 3. And while I'm doing that, I'll divide both sides by negative 4. Okay, so now I have x minus 3 equals um, 1 half which means that x equals 1 half plus 3, which is 3.5. This value here is supposed to be 3.5. Now this value here is 3, so my scale isn't very good. I'll have to tidy that up a little bit. All right, so that's a bit of a problem because that's not symmetrical anymore, but I'll fix that up when I find the y-intercept. So now we have, find the y-intercept, let x equal 0. y equals negative 2 on 0 minus 3, plus 4. Okay, so negative 2 over negative 3 is positive 2 thirds plus 4. That's 4 and 2 thirds, or approximately 4.6, or exactly 4.6 recurring. So that's 4, that's 5, this is 4.6 recurring, and I'll need to fix my sketch a bit. And that should be our equation entirely sketched done. And that's how you get triperbolas. Done.